Sciatica does not tell you where your problem is. It does not tell you what's causing your problem. So if you had pain in your buttocks, maybe down the back of your thigh, down your leg, into your feet, your toes, the bottom of your foot, maybe you've had numbness or tingling, pins and needles in the butt, down the back of the thigh, into your toes or your feet, and you were told by a doctor that you have sciatica, that does not tell you what's going on, what the problem is, or what you can do about it. In this video, I'm going to go over the anatomy of the sciatic nerve and the lower lumbar spine. We're going to go over what causes sciatica typically, and also the standard treatments that are available for this condition. And we're going to go over one treatment that is mostly overlooked that could be a major cause, if not the cause, of your, all your sciatic pain symptoms. So stay tuned. Hi, my name is Dr. Frank Altenrath, and I'm a corrective care chiropractor in Creskill, New Jersey at Valley Optimal Spine, trained and certified in chiropractic biophysics. Welcome to my channel. What this channel is about is giving you tips and strategies on how to handle acute and chronic back pain, how to strengthen and stabilize your back so that you could bend, lift, move normally again so that you can get back to your normal life without limitations. So if you want these tips and strategies, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. Click on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our new videos that come out on a weekly basis. So let's talk a little bit about sciatica. As I said earlier, sciatica is not a description of what's causing your pain or where the pain is. It's more a description of a pain pattern down the sciatic nerve. So if we look at the anatomy of the sciatic nerve, we look at this chart right here, this poster. This is your spine, this is your cervical spine, your thoracic spine, and your lumbar spine right here. So the sciatic nerve is, is made up of a combination of five nerve roots coming from the lower lumbar and the upper sacral area of your spine. The nerve roots are L4, L5, and then S1, S2, and S3. These nerves come together down here and form this big nerve called the sciatic nerve. It's the biggest nerve in the body. It's, it's pretty thick. So any pain that's causing pressure, any symptom that's causing pressure on that nerve will give you sciatic-like symptoms. So sciatic is basically pressure on the sciatic nerve. That pain will, could radiate down the one leg, down both legs, all the way to the lower leg, or it could stay in the buttocks. But basically, it's a symptom of pain radiating down the sciatic nerve. So that would be called sciatica. Now, what causes that sciatica is another story. The basic causes for sciatica could be something like a herniated disc in the lumbar spine that puts pressure on one of these nerve roots, causing pain going down the leg into the foot causing numbness or tingling, pins and needles, things like that. You could have, let's say, a bone spur. So arthritic changes in this area right here where a bone spur is growing, touching on the nerve, causing pain down the nerve. You could have something from a muscle being tight. So in the buttocks here, we have a muscle called the piriformis muscle, which is an external rotator of your hip. That muscle could become tight, putting pressure on that nerve in the buttocks region right here and that would be called piriformis syndrome. You could have some other kind of lesion. It could be some kind of growth, some kind of mass putting pressure on the sciatic nerve at any, in, in the spine or other areas of the body. You could also have um, spinal alignment being off, and that's the one area that we're gonna talk about that's really overlooked, where the alignment of your spine is off, putting pressure on these nerve roots here at the L4, L5 region causing pressure on the sciatic nerve, which causes pain then down your legs, numbness and tingling in the toes or the feet. So what are the basic treatments for sciatica? Well, there's supportive care where they may tell you to go home with an ice pack and just monitor your symptoms to see if they're getting better or they're getting worse. Um, you may get therapies for your pain where you go to a chiropractor, a physical therapist, a acupuncturist, maybe get some stretching or massage to help ease your symptoms. Then there's, of course, medications. They may give you NSAIDs. They may give you analgesics for the pain, maybe some muscle relaxants if it's a muscle issue, like I said before, with the piriformis syndrome. Maybe they give you some steroids or nerve pain medication that, that 
blocks or numbs the nerve pain that you're feeling. And then the medical route, you may get epidural injections. What we do here as a corrective care chiropractor is we look at the alignment. So we look and make sure that the spinal alignment is from the front and the back and from the side is in proper alignment. And that's what we're gonna go over here. We're gonna to explain to you what that entails. So let's go over the spinal alignment. So here's a spine, a model of a spine. Here we have the neck region, the cervical spine. Here we have the thoracic spine or the mid back. And here we have the low back or the lumbar spine. And then we have the pelvis and the sacrum. Pelvis and the sacrum. So from the back, when we look at the back of the spine from an x-ray, it should be perfectly straight. Okay, straight as narrow. And the pelvis should be nice and level. It shouldn't be tilted to one side, which would cause pressure on a disc or a nerve. It should be nice and level. From the side, the spine should have three curves. A neck curve, which is called a lordosis, a thoracic curve, which is a kyphosis, and then a lumbar curve, which is also a lordosis, okay, which is an elliptical model. So we need to see these structures because if they're not in, that, in those alignments, it's correlated to having disc issues, nerve issues, pain in general. So we wanna take an x-ray and to take a look whether the alignment of the spine is nice and straight from the front to back and it's got its proper curvatures from the side. Now what we see when a person loses their alignment and starts having pain and problems is a lumbar spine that has a normal elliptical shape okay, where it starts to lose its curve. Either the curve becomes straightened out or kyphotic, which is now gonna put abnormal biomechanical stress on the spine, putting pressures on any of these nerves right here. Or the spine is gonna have too much of a curve called a hyperlordosis, which is now going to pinch these joints in here because of too much pressure on the spine in this hyperextended posture where the sacrum is actually too tilted and the spine has too much of a curve. From the front to back, we would see the spine, which should normally be straight. We don't wanna see a lateral tilt to the spine like this. We don't wanna see a translation like this. So we look for these distortions uh, in our exam, and then we, if we do find them, we put together a corrective care protocol to restore the normal biomechanics of the spine in order to help the patients with their symptoms. So now I wanna go over some x-rays of real patients that have these biomechanical distortions that we just talked about so you can see it in a real life x-ray. Okay, so let's look at real life x-rays to see what I was talking about on a real spine in terms of postural distortions that could cause sciatic-like symptoms. So first let's look at normal. This is the lumbar spine, low back, and we see the green line is the normal alignment of the lumbar spine. The back of T12 should be right over the back of S1, and the spine should be in a elliptical model, elliptical configuration, where most of the curve is at L4, L5, L5, S1. Most of the curve of the lumbar spine is down in here. The rest is an elliptical shape. This represents a normal model of a lumbar spine. A person like this, we would not expect to have any symptomatology. Now let's look at a situation where a person has a loss of curvature. Okay, so here we have a patient who you can see it's a lumbar spine. The green line represents the normal curvature of the lumbar spine. And we can see in this case, the red line is moved significantly back of the, re of the green line. The red line represents their spine. And you can see that this is a loss of curvature. This person came in with pretty severe low back pain. Uh, MRI showed nothing, um, but she had the pain down the legs, typical sciatic-like symptoms. And you can see the loss of curvature. And if we go and f look at the actual numbers, we can see here that the curve is 2.8 degrees. Normal should be 40 degrees. So she's lost 92.9 or 93% of her curvature is already gone. These numbers tell us at what level most of the damage is or most of the, most of the loss of normal curvature is occurring. But overall, this is a 2.8 degree curve, which is pretty significant in terms of causing pain. So this is a person who has lost 
the curvature of their lumbar spine or their low back. Now in this case, compared to the previous one where we had a loss of curvature of the lumbar spine, we have an increase in curvature. This person has pain down the back of the thigh, numbness, tingling, and you can see the green line is the normal curvature, what it should be. We can see the red line has now moved forward of that green line. That's going to cause a lot of pressure here on these facet joints where the nerve come at, the nerves that form the sciatic nerve, some of them come out. So we can see an increase in curvature, hyperlordosis. And if we look at the actual numbers, this person has a 61.6 degree lumbar curve, which should be 40 degrees normal. So we have a 53.9 or 54% gain in curvature. So again, this is another way the spine can distort. We could have too little curve or too much curve. So these need to be looked at with a, a, a x-ray to see where the spine stands, where, where the biomechanical stresses are on the spine that can cause these sciatic-like symptoms besides herniated discs and things like that. So this is a hyperlordotic lumbar curve. So now in the third type of biomechanical distortion we could see in the spine is looking at the spine from front to back. So this is a person standing facing you. This is their lumbar spine. This is their pelvis. This is their sacrum. These are the hips. So we can see now that in a normal alignment, the spine should be nice and straight and the sacrum should be nice and level, including the hips. That is a, a normal lumbar spine, looking at it from front to back. Again, this person we would expect would have no symptoms. Now let's look at someone who has a distortion in that normal alignment. So here we see our patient who came in with, again, pain down the legs coming from the low back. We could see his low back right here, lumbar spine. This is the pelvis. This is the sacrum. And you can see the lumbar spine is starting to veer off to this side, which is actually the left side. It's, it's an A to P view, so this is left, this is right. So his spine is actually bending off to the uh, left side, but you can see the sacrum is not level. The green is a level line, and the red line designates the tilting of his sacrum, which is causing the entire spine to go to the, this, the same direction as the imbalance. And you can see here the leg imbalance. The left side leg is much lower than the right side leg. So in this case, this was causing a lot of pinching and problems in his L4, L5, L5, S1 area, which is nerves that make up part of the sciatic nerve, causing the pain and numbness and tingling down his legs into his buttocks, down his legs, into the feet. So in this case, we gave this gentleman a, a lift on this side, it might, I think it was an eight or nine millimeter lift, to level out his pelvis, which will take the pressure off of that low back and help to resolve his symptoms. We give him um, corrective care, specialized adjustments for that, along with the heel lift and certain traction protocols. But again, this was the issue of his pain causing those symptoms that he had, these sciatic-like symptoms. And again, if we look at the numbers on this patient, I forgot to do that before, but we see that he is 21 millimeters off of center with his lateral uh, translation of his lumbar spine, and his sacral base is 11 millimeters tilted to the left, okay? And this program also accounts for the magnification error with x-ray, so it takes off the 25% of the value because when you take an x-ray of somebody, there is magnification. So we gave him a heel lift to compensate for that 11 millimeters and it helped to start to resolve his symptoms. So I hope you can see in those x-rays the difference between normal spinal alignment and abnormal spinal alignment and how those abnormalities or postural distortions seen on x-ray can cause pressure on those nerves coming out at the lower lumbar spine, upper sacral spine that make up that sciatic nerve causing pressure and pain symptoms down the back of your leg, into your feet, into your thighs, and that these things need to be looked at. So if you have been to a doctor and they said, well, you have sciatica, and they've never looked at uh, the alignment, just told you, well, you don't have a herniated disc, go get stretch or put ice on it or get an injection, it's not gonna solve the problem. The problem is that you need to have your spine looked at by qualified 
chiropractor or anyone doing corrective care work so they could do a proper um, x-ray analysis, uh, orthopedic, neurological exam, and then find out what's going on, where your spine is, get the objective findings, and then devise a treatment plan to bring that spine back into its normal uh, alignment that it should be in to get rid of all the pressure that, and, and pain and symptoms that you're feeling. If you are looking for a corrective care chiropractor in your, in your area, we have a database of, of hundreds of chiropractors that do corrective care that are certified in uh, chiropractic biophysics. So just leave a comment and we'll get somebody, um, get you hooked up with somebody near your area. So if you like this content, uh, you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up button, give the video to somebody you know that could use this information, and until our next video, we'll see you then. Thank you. Bye-bye. Valley Optimal Spine is located on 80 Broadway Suite 1A in Creskill, New Jersey. Our telephone number is 201-569-1212.